welcome to our partner webinar, MyPV and ESW. Uh, we are showing our products, our solutions for hot water and space heating from photovoltaics. And the webinar today uh, will last for about 50 to 60 minutes. At the end of the session, there will be uh, an, a question and answer uh, session, of course. But during our presentation, you have the chance to ask questions in the chat room anytime. So uh, there are colleagues of mine with us today and they will answer your questions while I'm talking. And I will start uh, with a short introduction. Um, I guess you see slide two now, just one, one short check again, because there, was, there have been some problems when we, we skipped the slides. Okay, it works. Thank you, Gerhard, for your support. A brief introduction of our companies. Um, Gerhard already, uh, who just gave me the feedback now, is our managing director. Uh, Gerhard has more than a few decades of experience in solar electronics design. He raised the um, a PV uh, inverter um, part at Fronius a long time ago. And he's, he's a really very well experienced guy in, in development of solar electronics. Uh, beside that, he also has uh, the knowledge and the background of the solar thermal side. And this is also the, the side why, where I came from. I worked in the field of research for solar thermal systems for many years before I started at MyPV. And uh, from that point of view, we know that uh, the development of solar thermal systems um, actually is, is over. Yeah? There, there will not be uh, huge uh, improvements in the future. Nowadays, we have PV and cables instead of pipes make the systems many times easier in terms of the, of the, technolo of the technology. And it's nowadays also cheaper. So uh, then there is one colleague left that I want to introduce. Uh, it's uh, Mr. Tal Albat. Uh, he's our new colleague at MyPV and he will be your contact person for uh, everything that deals with, uh, with sales, with uh, price requests. And um, of course, me and other colleagues are available for, for technical information anytime. So um, here is um, a short history of MyPV. Actually, we are a quite young company. We are started in 2011 as a PV system vendor. And during the years, we changed our business model and become a pure manufacturer. There has been the first uh, development, the first solution in the year 2014, which is named ELVA. ELVA means electric water heater. And um, with uh, some adaptions, this solution is uh, still available uh, on the market until today with hardly no changes. And there is a special version of ELVA, which we are going to introduce to you today, which is named SC20. This is our product for Rotex Cinecube and uh, ESW is going to present this solution today. After 2014, there have been several uh, AC uh, solutions and the most important one, uh, which is the actor, is the part that I will show you today. Good. Um, Javier, uh, please activate your microphone and uh, give us a short introduction of ESW, please. Thanks for the introduction, Reinhard. I'm very excited to be here. So before continuing, I just want to say that we will announce the winner of the actor by the end of the webinar. So a, a brief introduction about our company. Uh, Norm is our director. He has built up successful commercial plumbing businesses in Australia, uh, where he introduces innovative renewable energy technologies. He's also the vice president of Master Plumbers in Australia and has 40 years of experience in the industry. Uh, myself, Javier, I study industrial engineering and I specialize in electrical and renewable energy engineering. I'm currently working in the engineering team where we design hot water systems, both in uh, both residential and commercial, and we also provide support. Uh, I would say my area of work focuses especially in photovoltaics. Okay. Um, this, uh, this is just a, a picture of our facilities in Romana. As you can see, you have, we have different technologies. Um, we welcome anyone that wants to 
uh, learn about these uh, technologies. In this slide, you can see that we have EV charges in, in our facilities. Also, we have different inverters and uh, batteries and different technologies on the roof of solar panels, both PV and thermal. So these are some pictures of our work that we do in our factory. Uh, it's quite impressive when you come here. Um, we essentially we preassemble our systems and we do 98% of all work so that when we deliver the, the systems they are just like a plug and play system. Um, this is very helpful for the for the plumbers on site because it saves them uh, a ton of time. Um, just this slide to, to say that we uh, we have global partners everywhere, and not only in Australia. We we have different offices in Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, you can see here a picture of our director in um, United States, and also our colleagues in Dubai in one project, and and the plumbing and fire industry award excellence. Next one, fine heart. Okay, now it's up to me again. Uh, Javier, thank you very much uh, for the introduction of ESW. So uh, to sum up, uh, MyPV is a manufacturer. We develop and produce solutions for power to heat applications in residential systems. And ESW is our distributor, our um, sales partner in Australia and in New Zealand. And thank you very much uh, to Javier and, and to Norm uh, and all uh, your, of your team members uh, for the chance to have this cooperated uh, webinar today. So now we have uh, done a short introduction of ourselves. Uh, at this point, we want to know a little more about you, ladies and gentlemen. So please, uh, let's uh, give us some small informations about your profession. I start with an uh, with a survey I hope you can see it now uh, Javier give me a, give me a sign if everything works okay so uh, please uh, click on the solutions uh, on the answers actually uh, to have an idea what is your profession are you an electrician are you working in the plumbing industry uh, Probably you're a planner or a consultant um, or give us an information if you are dealing in on-grid systems or off-grid systems. Mainly this would be really interesting for us. So let's keep this open for a few more seconds. Okay, that's interesting. Wow. And uh, I hope you can see this now. So 19% uh, are working in the field of electrical installations. 21% are working in the field of the plumbing industry. Uh, a quarter of all the participants are planners or consultants. And one fifth is uh, working in on-grade installations and 16% uh, are working with off-grid systems. That's very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, one more uh, survey at this point. We are interested uh, in the brands that you use or in the systems that you use for planning. So uh, just click on the brands here. There is also the chance to uh, select more than one uh, question, by the way. Wow, SMA is, is well, well known. Okay, other brands which are not on the list too. Okay. 13% mm -hmm. Victron. 14 now. Okay. Thank you very much. So this is the result. Um, approximately a quarter is working with Fronios, a quarter with SMA systems and other brands. And then there are 50% that are using Victron systems. Solar Edge is, is used uh, and a small number is working with Selectronic as well. Thank you very much. This is really interesting for us. And now we are starting uh, with, the, with the topic of today. And at the beginning, I would like to deal a little bit with the question, why hot water and space heating from 
photovoltaics and the answer is here. Uh, PV systems have become so cheap that nowadays we can, we can uh, create projects and solutions that were not thinkable uh, many years ago. So let's say if you told someone uh, that you think about using PV power directly for heat production seven years ago, uh, it, it would not be, there is no chance that this guy would understood the idea because at those days uh, PV power was, was too expensive to create heat with. But things have changed completely. Nowadays PV power is, uh, is um, uh, most cost effective energy source that we have and now of course we can think about new applications for PV power and the solutions from MyPV are such examples. Um, Gerhard, our managing director and me, we, we came also from the solar thermal side and there, are a, there is a huge list of benefits that we see when we compare those systems. Uh, when we take a look on a, on a solar thermal system, we see there's a huge collector on the roof. This is a heavy collector. It has to be insulated on the, on the back sheet. You need uh, pipes for hot and cold side. You have to insulate these pipes, of course. You need a pump. You need an expansion vessels because when the content of the collector evaporates, the liquid has to go somewhere. That's why you need an expansion vessels vessel. Of course you need to fill this with anti-freezing liquid uh, because the, the content can also freeze and you need a heat exchanger of course to bring the thermal energy to the tank. You need a control system with wirings for sensors and so on and so on. This results in a huge effort uh, for maintenance. Yeah, In, in Europe uh, one time per year the anti-freezing liquid has to be checked and in every case you need a backup energy source because if there is no sunlight there will be no heat production from the thermal system. On the other hand uh, we have our DC solution it's called SC20 in Australia and there are just four to eight PV panels on the roof. That's it no big deal just four to eight panels and these panels are directly connected to the heater and there is no PV inverter in between. So you also do not need a permission from the grid operator to run such a system. The SC20 has an MPP tracker integrated and a linear power control unit from 0 to 2000 watts. And as an option there is the possibility to, um, to draw um, power from the AC side for boost backup. This is an option, it's not necessary to use it. Um, but we see when we compare those systems, it's many times easier. Now you have two small wires and that's it. You do not need a heat exchanger and you have the option for boost backup as well. So the DC solution SC20 from MyPV is the only solution that we present to you today, which can be directly compared to a solar thermal system because you take all the power from the panels for, and use it for heat production only. There is no way to use the power for other appliances in the building as well. The uh, input voltage is the value that matters. The DC input voltage for SC20 has to be within an area of 100 to 360 volts. So for a 60 cell polycrystalline panel I'm talking uh, of 4 to 8 panels now. Okay, and then it's about uh, saving the energy. We need to store uh, energy somewhere, especially in on-grid system. And the most common way to save energy, to increase your self-utilization ratio is a battery system. In a residential building, the most uh, common uh, capacity of a battery is somewhere around five to 10 kilowatt hours. And this is actually quite a slow a low capacity that has to be bought for for much money as a cheaper alternative we can use a mypv solution to increase the self utilization ratio for example in a 300 liter hot water boiler we can uh, we can store 50 kilowatt hours of excessive energy in an on grid system for example uh, this means that MyPV solutions can be a cheap alternative to batteries, but uh, to be clear, MyPV does not compete with batteries. There is a number of successful corporations with battery manufacturers as well. 
Okay, um, then we want to start with our uh, product portfolio and we start with the SC20. Uh, after the part which is presented by Javier now, we will uh, change over to the Actor, which is an AC product. And at the beginning, we will look at on-grid uh, applications with the Actor. And at the end, we will see an off-grid application mode as well. So, Javier, please take over at this point and give us some info about SC20. Thanks, Reinhard. Um, so, the SC20 is um, a product that has been adapted uh, exclusively just only for the Australian market. Um, as, as, you, as you said, um, it takes the power from, from the panels, so no pipes uh, are required. So that, that's what we say, uh, wires, wires instead of pipes. Um, it's a two kilowatt DC element, and it has the option of uh, boost, as, as you say, Ranka. And it's 100% uh, off-grid, so there is no grid interference. And, and it can work during blackouts, so that's fine. You can adjust the temperature, like you said, and it has a very efficient MPPT. You don't need an, an additional inverter. And just expanding of what you said, uh, Reinhardt, um, it also has a data logger that you can connect your computer and you can monitor um, all the all the data and you can even export to Excel. And um, yeah, I will show you soon a couple of examples. And just one more thing, um, it's uh, here uh, approved by the Clean Energy Council. And the installation is really easy. It's just two MC4s. Um, and it also comes with a Rotex tank, which is, we, we like to call it a, a thermal battery. Just to mention that Rotex is very, very efficient. It's, it's more efficient than most of the tanks in the market. Um, and it's much better insulated. This is one example in, in Australia. Um, PyCAC. Um, NOM is very involved in this training center. It's, um, what I want to highlight, this is a net zero building and we we developed this, uh, we provided these two Rotex tanks with the two SC20s and yeah, um, one thing I want to say is that our company is different to others because we are very flexible and we adapt all our solutions to, to the customer. Other companies, they just sell you the product. We we fully customize for, for the client what was the best solution. We have a, an incredible engineering team. Um, oh, this case study, I'm very, very proud of this ex, uh, case study. I almost couldn't believe it. Um, just want to highlight that this, this homeowner um, is only spending $59 Per year on hot water. How good does it sound? <laughs> so currently, 92% of all the water comes from renewable energy, and only 8% comes from the from the boost. And this is just to to show what I said before about the monitoring. Uh, you can very easily connect the computer and then export this to to Excel. This is just one example. And this, another one, one of the, our commercial clients, um, you can see a, a little um, sentence here from the engineering manager, um, who is very happy about the, the system. Um, um, I, I recently visited the, the factory. I exported the data. We have data for 200 days. And I quickly ca calculate the, the values and the savings are approximately $1,500 per year, just with two SC20s. As you can see here in the graph in the right bottom corner, um, the temperature is very, it's uh, very constant, very high during all year. Okay, this one, Ranka, is this your... 
So, Javier, thank you. Um, I can take over now. The SC20 is a, is a as I said, it is a, a special designed uh, product for ESW. So it's it's our exclusive distributor in Australia and New Zealand, which uh, has a lot of successful stories, as you already could see uh, in behind. And now we are leaving the DC area, which means we are now going to AC products, which have alternating current uh, accordingly as, a, as the energy source. We are now mainly uh, dealing with on-grid systems. And in on-grid system, there is always the first question, how much excessive power is available? Because the idea is that the PV power that comes from the panels through the inverter is mainly or with higher priority used in the, in the electrical installation of the building for the light, for the appliances, for TV, washing machine and all that stuff. And only the rest of the energy, uh, the excess energy, which usually would be fed into the power grid, uh, need once, uh, is, is the energy that we are uh, going to use. Uh, for power to heat applications. And one possibility to measure this amount of excessive energy in the feed-in point is the MyPV power meter. I have one uh, next to me here. The power meter is an, an accessory part from MyPV. Um, you can uh, install it in the, in the uh, electric cabinet next to the utility meter of your energy supplier. And the power meter comes with a uh, three CT clamps. Um, the CT clamps that are with the power meter are for 16 amps measurement. Um, it can also be used in single phase system systems and upon request we can also provide bigger CT clamps. For example, for industrial projects we have CT clamps uh, up to 600 amps. But 60 amps are always inside the box and the communication from the power meter to the actor always happens via Ethernet. So the normal way to use it is that you connect both devices with, with a patch cable to your Ethernet router. There is also a special feature for the situation, and just in case that there is no network, that there is no router available, you can also connect the units directly with each other, but then you have to use a so-called cross-over patch cable. It's not a standard patch cable. The normal way is to use it on an Ethernet network via a router. I have said the power meter is an accessory part. It's an option because one of our most successful philosophies at MyPV is our idea of flexible third-party control, which means that uh, we are also, also compatible for superordinated control systems such as battery manufacturers, uh, PV inverter manufacturers or smart home manufacturers. And here are a lot of brands that you probably know well. We have uh, done the survey before. There were a lot of systems with SMA, for example. This already works in on-grid systems when you use the SMA Sunny Home Manager, for example. And then the set point signal to the actor can come from the SMA Sunny Home Manager and you do not need to use the MyPV power meter. So beside all those brands, there is also another way. Uh, we provide our communication protocol if you want to create your home automation system yourself. So uh, the, com the communication is really open for third party control and the MyPV power meter is a, a very successful accessory part, for example, for all the systems out there where the power to heat application is a retrofitting uh, option. It's, it's uh, quite common to use the power meter there. Okay, um, then it's all about the idea to increase the self-utilization ratio in an on-grid system. Uh, this can be interesting, for example, that the feed-in tariff is not interesting from uh, the economics point of view or feed-in is not allowed at all. This also can happen. And here we uh, want to focus on the question how much increase is possible. So for to describe that, uh, there is a diagram which shows the possibilities very well. The average uh, residential system uh, PV size in Australia is uh, between 6 and 7 kilowatt peaks. 
And for a single family home, this means that an average self-utilization ratio of, of around 20 to 25 percent is possible. The rest of the energy is too much. Uh, to say it this way, because the PV production happens not at the same uh, time when when you have a power demand, for example, in the evening for your for your TV or whatever. So the most common form to increase the self-consumption ratio is to install a battery. Yeah, you can uh, improve the self-utilization ratio by a factor of around two, but you have to accept a huge step. Uh, at the investment costs. As a cheaper alternative, you can use the actor and use the excessive power for heat production. And we see the self consumption ratio gets even higher to around 70% in this example. And uh, this is possible with a times lower investment. Nevertheless, uh, we do not compete with batteries. I already mentioned that we have a, a a number of successful uh, corporations with battery manufacturers as well. And when you combine both technologies, um, uh, someone is moving my slides here. <laughs> when you combine both technologies, you increase the self consumption ratio to a maximum of more than 80% in this example for Australia. If there is a battery, um, you should give the battery a priority when you charge it because once it is heat in the hot water boiler of course we cannot get back electricity out of it so priority should always be on the battery this is our recommendation and what we see here in theory is uh, the uh, day chart of the excessive power. So during the night you see that there is demand from the power grid. Some time in the morning there is excessive power available. And from this point forward we can use this excessive power for power to heat application or for the charging of the battery first as in this example. So this is a theoretical um, diagram of a perfect day. What happens in real system is this. Of course, PV production changes all the time. It's changing permanently. And at the same time, we are switching loads on and off. And the balance in your feed-in point, uh, the, the amount of power, which is too much, changes all the time. And what we are doing is we are... Uh, we are ensuring that there is the balance made all the time. And here the idea of linear power control becomes obvious because the amount of excess power changes all the time. And it's not about switching an electric heater on because then a normal electric heater would uh, drain a certain level of uh, electric power from the grid or from the battery. And this is not smart in terms of um, of photovoltaic uh, power to heat heating. So what MyPV actually does is we make an, a normal on-off resistor, an ohmic electric heating element, are now PV ready. We make it PV ready in terms of linear power control and this is done by the actor. And then there, before we start with the actor, there's one slide left uh, from Javier, which gives us an impression of the feed-in tariffs in Australia. And that's, please explain why the actor is so important in your country. Yeah, uh, so just to expand a little bit of what you just said. Um, so you, you talk about this four point. Let me quickly take, oh, sorry. Let me take the mouse. Can you see my mouse now? Yeah. Yes. So what, what Ryan has just explained, uh, it's about the self-consumption, 20%. Uh, let me just quickly draw to make this uh, so that people understand. Uh, uh, usually, um, a normal day looks something like this. It's solar. I'm a terrible drawer. Uh, and the load profile is something like this. Sorry, in the morning, some loads, and then you're at work, and then back again in the evening. So you have all these of solar excess. That's what Brian had just explained. Um, that's why we say that is 20%. So that's this point. Um, 
we have the problem now in Australia that feeding tariffs are decreasing. We we all have heard and, and read news. For example, here you, you can see it's from solar quotes that now in some states of Australia they are reaching to three cents per kilowatt hour. And not only that, the AIMO, the the grid operator now is looking to switch off solar. I think that's happening as well in Europe. So, of course, buying a battery can can help with these issues, but batteries are extremely expensive. So, just this slide, I want to just highlight that Actor can help with these points. Thank you. Okay. Um, so it's all about linear power control. Thank you very much for this explanation uh, because we just want to use the amount of power that is available, not more, not less. And that's why we need a power controller. This thing that we have uh, shown now, the whole topic of self-consumption and increasing the self-utilization ratio, of course, needs to be calculated somehow. And there's an online calculator available at the MyPV website. And it's actually more than a calculator. It's a tool. It helps us with your PV system design. Uh, it helps us to, to have strong arguments for your uh, consultancy, for your sales activity. So I recommend to you use this uh, power coach, uh, which uh, is very easy to handle. You can adjust the location, you can adjust the PV array, you can select a, a My PV solution there, and it gives you an idea about the possibilities. But um, more uh, this was more than enough on theory. Now we want to go into more detail on the actor itself. We already mentioned it 100 times. <laughs> so here it is. And when we uh, introduced the actor to the market in November 2017, uh, it was uh, by some people, it was misunderstood. They saw this uh, device on the wall. They saw this color touch screen and they thought, okay, well, this is obvious uh, some kind of smart home system. Actually, they were wrong because technically speaking, the actor is an AC power controller. I already tried to describe what it is uh, used for. Uh, it makes a standard electric heating element PV ready. It makes it PV ready in terms of linear power control. Because when your standard heating element and the boiler is switched on, it, uh, it uh, uses a certain level of energy. And, and this is a no, no smart interaction with your PV system. It's, so the actor is something like a gearbox in between, which sets the power output on the resistor, on the heating element, according to your amount of excessive power. And there are two actor versions on the market in Australia. Number one is the actor I. The I is uh, for international. And it comes with a European mains plug. So it's a, a single phase system for linear power control from zero to 3000 watts. And to make it uh, more practical for Australia and New Zealand, of course, the international version has an international adapter. So there is no uh, need to, to uh, install a European mains plug to connect it to the socket. Of course, the adapter comes with the device. Uh, with all actors, uh, there is always one temperature sensor in the box. The length of the cable is uh, five meters. Uh, you need this temperature sensor for the optional boost backup. Um, but if you just want to use excessive power on an immersion heater, and this immersion heater has a, a, a mechanic thermostat that cuts off the load once the target temperature is reached, it's not necessary to use this temperature sensor additionally. But for the option of boost backup, it's always available in the box. So the actor has a huge number of unique sales points. Uh, number one is the size. It's, it's a power st stage which is, is so small, I can hold it in my hand here next to me. And this is not a model, this is a real uh, unit from the serial production here. Number two, I already mentioned it, it is the color touch display. I, it it's enables um, a very intuitive control of the, of the device. 
I always uh, give the example when you can set the, the clock to wake up next morning on your smartphone, you should be able to uh, activate the optional boost backup on the actor as well without taking the manual. So it's, it's very intuitive and clear to, to do such settings. Then uh, um, unique sales point number three, everything is pluggable at MyPB. So not just the load and the communication with RG45, uh, so that's clear, it's pluggable, but also the temperature sensor, which is pre-wired on this orange plug, uh, is pluggable as, as the, num uh, the name tells us. And depending on the operation mode, uh, more on the operation modes later, by the way, uh, there is also the option for an integrated switch relay. And of course, also this relay can be connected with the plug very easily. So this was unique sales point number three. Unique sales point number four is our philosophy of uh, flexible control. So there is no need to use the MyPV power meter. You can also receive the set point signal, respective the excessive power information from, an, from a brand that is already compatible to MyPV. And I can say it again, we also offer the description of our communication protocol and you control the uh, power of the actor power controller yourself. We have... Um, all the technical details here, uh, you will receive the slides of the webinar today anyway after the session. So I will skip that slide and uh, I want to deal with the Actro 9S now. You see on the right side of the slide there is the same image. That's uh, because the Actro 9S is integrated in the same case as the single phase Actro. The difference is then that it is not a single phase product anymore. It's now a three phase product and it's a power stage for up to nine kilowatt power control. So, and this is really, really unique. A power density in this package is not available on the market by another manufacturer. And we are really proud of this to have this three phase nine kilowatt product uh, of this size. And again, there's still our philosophy of pluggable uh, connections. So uh, also with three phase um, loads, you can connect everything by plugs here at the bottom. And what is again, one more unique sales point of the Actro 9S is the MyPV possibility that the linear power controlled phase can change from output one to output two to output three. So when you look on a three phase power controller on other, of other manufacturers out there on the market, they usually are always doing the linear power control on, once, on one phase from zero to 3000 watts. And from a certain level of excessive power, they are switching on phase two and phase three and uh, output one is always the output which is linear power control. We are also working in that way. So uh, the outputs can always be controlled from zero to 3000 watts, but overall it affects in a power control range from zero to nine kilowatt. And the, the benefit, as I mentioned, is that we can change the control output from output one to output two to output three. And this leads to some other great applications that can only be created with the Actro 9S. Here again, we have all the technical details. Uh, you can see uh, on that details uh, later. Um, what is important to say when you do uh, the retrofitting installation for a three phase heating element, you have to consider one important fact. This three phase load always needs a neutral conductor. So it's uh, a star connection, not a delta connection. Every time this is very important, you have to know this. The Actor I and the Actor 9S, uh, they come with uh, eight standard operation modes. These are yeah, standards which um, fit to uh, around 90% of all the residential installation. Uh, and this leads to the question, uh, what can I do with all the other uh, installations? What can I do with the remaining 10%? Which does not exactly fit into, into this uh, predefined operation modes. The answer is again our communication protocol. You receive the communication protocol for a third party control and you use the Actor I or the Actor 9S in a way uh, that is useful for you.
because of course not every project fits uh, into this predefined uh, operation modes. Uh, the most important ones uh, are those that I'm going to show you now. For the actor, there's the mode one, hot water, which means uh, power control on the output from zero to 3000 watts. And for the actor 9S, of course, this means power output uh, control from zero to 9000 watts on a three phase load. Uh, the excessive power, which can be measured in the feed in point, either comes from the power meter or a compatible brand or by some other, is provided by some other third party control system via Ethernet. The um, control speed and the reaction time of the actor depends on the on the time which is provided by the superordinated control. The fastest way to make the balance in the feed-in point here is to use the MyPV power meter. One time per second for each single watt the balance is made in the feed-in point. And this means if you just switch on the light in the living room here, from this point forward you have less of excessive power available, which means the actor will immediately reduce its power output on the electric heater to avoid feed-in or import from the power grid. This balance is made very fast and very accurate and in the uh, the fastest way to ensure the balance is the MyPV power meter. Then there is uh, a special thing for this mode one. When you use the Actra 9S, you can take use of this amazing advantage to separate, uh, to, to change the control phase from output one to output two to output three. And here, uh, this, this um, capability uh, becomes very important because instead of a uh, 9 kilowatt or, or 6 kilowatt or 4.5 kilowatt three phase heater, you can now use three single phase heaters. And this means that for bigger tanks, for, for huge storage tanks, you have the chance to optimize the thermal stratification from top to the bottom. And for example, let's assume that there is one kilowatt of excessive power available at this point. The actor will do the linear power control on the output which is connected to the heater at the top. Now let's assume that there are 4 kilowatt of excessive power. The actor will switch output 1 which is connected, uh, sorry output 3 which is connected to the heater on the top and it will change the linear power control to the heater in the middle and in that way this becomes much more efficient. The, the heating of this huge tank becomes much more efficient uh, and you, now you already know what happens when you have 7 kilowatt peak of excessive power. The actor will switch the heat on the top and in the middle and it will do the linear power control uh, with the heat at the bottom. There is uh, one special heating element provided by ESW for the Rotex Sanicube which can work in that way. So this only is possible with our uh, capability to change the control phase between the outputs. Very important. Then there is mode 2, which is the stratification charge mode. Uh, do not confuse with this setting that I have uh, described now. Because the stratification charge mode, mode 2, uh, changes over the linear power control completely from one resistor to the other, respective from, from one immersion heater to the other. For example, uh, one heater is on the top, which has higher priority then, and one heater is at the bottom, which has lower priority. For the Actor International, the single phase version, uh, we can directly redirect the controlled power via our integrated relay here. Of course, this is not possible for a three phase load, which means that for a three phase load, there is uh, a switch in between, a normally closed and a normally open switch, which changes over from one heater to the other. And the signal for the switching point comes from our relay output. And so a uh, linear power control from zero to nine kW, kilowatts, sorry, is possible for two heaters, but one after the other. Okay. And then there is one predefined operation mode for heat pumps. Uh, to be honest, uh, we see the combination photo of photovoltaics with heat pumps uh, very critical at MyPV. Why is that? Uh, 
Uh, it's easy. PV power changes all the, all the time. We already know that. Uh, but for the most common standards of heat pumps, it is the case that once the heat pump is on, once it is activated, the compressor, which is driven by an electric motor, uh, uses a certain level of electric energy. And this electric power actually is not, uh, cannot be adjusted according to your amount of excessive power because this is a, a complex mechanic hydraulic system. You cannot scale up and down the power of, of, the, driving in, of the driving motor. Uh, so this is one point and then of course there's the fact that uh, you cannot switch on and off a heat pump from one second to the other just as you want and then on again because due to its, uh, its um, mechanic hydraulic construction uh, this is not possible. This is only possible for a pure electric heater, for an immersion heater, for an electric heating mat, for an in infrared red panel respective for all kinds of ohmic loads that can uh, you that use electric energy for for heating nevertheless there remains one important question what if there would be more than enough excessive power to drive the heat pump to activate the heat pump and for this situation there is mode 4 and at this mode we are not doing the linear power control of the compressor of the heat pump but we are integrating the heat pump into our energy management and for all systems where the actor knows the amount of excessive power in the feed in point, the, uh, the heat pump can be released via our integrated relay. So uh, the, the heat pump has the chance to start from this moment forward and during the time when the heat pump is working the actor does the continues to do the linear power control of the electric heating element and ensures the balance in the feed in point in that way so this was mode 4 uh, the next mode is very interesting from my point of view because it brings together the the purpose of hot water heating and electric space heating and the the original topic of hot water from photovoltaics already found its way into the hearts and minds of the people into the hearts and minds of our customers and it's well known for years now the topic electric space heating is, is relatively young but nevertheless we have uh, great uh, applications great projects that uh, can be realized uh, that can be created in that way and this is for all buildings which have a very uh, low demand of uh, space heating energy. So this is for low energy buildings, this is uh, for passive houses. It's not for old buildings with a high demand of, of, um, of space heating energy. Um, such buildings are installed uh, with, with uh, conventional boiler systems, with uh, hydronic space heating systems. But for newer buildings, our idea is that we can replace the whole conventional installation in the building. We, we remove all those pipes from the installation and we are doing the, electric, the space heating electrically as well. Not only the hot water heating, but the space heating as well. But the idea, of course, is that this is mainly driven by power from your PV system. Them. And that's uh, what we can do with the operation mode five. So to answer the question, uh, do you uh, will it be cold in the rooms when there is not enough excessive power available? No, of course uh, it's it's not that the case. Um, you, there is a boost backup also available for the electric space heating zones, uh, as it is of course also for the hot water heating. Um, what we are doing is sometimes misunderstood when we are talking about electric space heating. The people think about uh, the system here in the middle. They see, uh, they think we uh, draw energy from the public grid and use it one by one without an efficiency factor in between for electric heating. What we are actually doing with our uh, with our concept is the same what a heat pump is doing. A heat pump uses environmental energy. It, it evaporates a cooling liquid in an evaporator and in that way it takes energy from the ambient air and brings it into the building. 
And now we replace uh, all the pipes here as well with uh, wires. We are doing the same thing. We are using the same energy source, which is the sun, of course. What has changed is the energy carrier. The physical form of the energy carrier is now electricity instead of heat. But this is the same principle as the heat pump has. And when at the end of the year, the blue arrow here for the energy, which includes uh, and the normal electric energy demand as well as the, the energy demand for boost backup when at the end of the year this arrow this amount here is smaller than in the system with the heat pump then it's not only uh, easier to install it's not only cheaper it's also the greener solution and that's uh, the point that matters and one more fact um, a system that works without any moving part is not only maintenance free, it's also a silent system. So these are two other advantages of this uh, of this new topic. And there is already or there are already projects out there. Uh, the first project uh, is this single family home in our province in Upper Austria here. And it uh, was installed with the 11 kilowatt peak system um, and the the owner of this building obviously had the idea I take my my money I take my my budget for building installation and instead of installing a boiler room somewhere in the basement with hundreds of pipes I'm now putting this investment on my roof so uh, what is what can be seen here uh, this the question is always how much how big does a PV system needs to be in a single family home and the question the answer is just uh, completely uh, use the whole area of the roof um, it's it's cheaper anyway and um, this uh, building has an uh, energy demand a specific energy demand for space heating of 50 kilowatt hours per square meter a year actually this is not that good um, a modern building that would be built today would have a better standard thus, thus it would um, would be uh, it, it would have better conditions for this idea of this concept but even with 50 kilowatt hours of space heating energy demand uh, the owner of the building had operation costs last year of around 750 euros uh, which should be 1200 Australian dollars and this uh, money not only included the power from the grid for electric appliances for light and, and other utilities uh, it also included the energy for hot water and it also included the energy for space heating and this is really uh, an amazing thing to run a building to run a single family home uh, with this cost here okay uh, this is uh, the operate this was the operation mode 5 and now I'm skipping to mode 8 which uh, I think is very interesting and very important for your market it is the frequency mode it is a mode for pure off-grid installations uh, of course we are talking about AC off-grid installations now um, and there is um, the concept uh, with the with these three brands uh, which are manufacturers of battery inverters that they are shifting the uh, frequency in the AC off-grid once their battery is full why are they shifting the frequency uh, they are increasing the frequency to tell the PV inverter that the battery has reached the state of full charge. Thus, the PV inverter needs to decrease its power output to prevent the battery from overcharging. So usually there would have been much excessive power available from the PV system, but it would not be used because the PV needs to shut down to protect the battery. What my PV does is simple we can listen to the frequency in the AC off-grid we are our mains power supply so in this in this mode you do not even have to install an Ethernet cable we are listening to the frequency increase in the AC off-grid and when the actor detects that the frequency goes up it uh, it increases its power output accordingly what is the advantage here it's easy we avoid that the PV inverter decreases its power output we are using and utilize, utilizing energy that would be wasted before and for all thermal uh, applications this is a, an amazing chance to to do the hot water heating to do the electric uh, space heating with power that usually would be wasted 
And of course, there are this uh, typical uh, stereotype Austrian projects with the mountain shelters here in the Alps. Uh, Javier will uh, later present us an Australian reference project. And le recently we have done uh, a project with a Belgium research station on the South Pole. Actually, they were looking for a solution which made the which makes the off-grid system more stable because beside PV arrays they have a number of, of um, wind turbines as well on their in their off-grid system, and so they were looking for a solution to make the AC system more stable. What they have found is what they were looking for, but they have the additional benefit that they are uh, using this excessive power now to melt the snow for hot water production and to heat up their, their garage where the, where the engineers do the maintenance of the snowmobile. So an, an amazing benefit here and basically they were looking uh, only for a solution to make their AC off-grid more stable. Good. Um, Javier, um, Avocado Farm project in Western Australia. Please tell us more on that. Well, thanks, Reinhard. So this is a project that we installed in Western Australia. Um, it has six uh, actors eye connected in two rotex tanks, and it's, it's quite amazing. It produces, I think, 90 tons of avocado, um, and it's just 100% uh, renewable energy. Um, as you said, yeah, it was with uh, frequency shift and no communication, no additional communication is required. This is another example we heard from Tasmania, uh, from Michael. And Michael loves the actor. He wants to the community to keep growing. Um, yeah, uh, currently 90% of the of his hot water comes from the from the actor. Um, there are so many advantages that you can see here in the slide. Um, one thing that I want to to highlight is the capability, the option to monitor. Uh, I think we don't have any slide about that. Um, so now, current uh, actor, um, it's a new feature that has, and uh, you can not only monitor uh, from your phone, laptop, etc. You can also remote control. Um, one second. It's just a, a screen so that I quickly when you were talking, uh, the source, the, the monitoring, um, all the temperature, power, etc. And on the right, uh, it's just, just an example, uh, things that you can control. You don't need, you don't even need to be at home. You just can do it anywhere. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for this um, presentation of the two uh, projects. So beside um, a commercial project in the off-grid sector, it's of course also possible to use the actor in mode 8 uh, in a residential building. Uh, Michael has, as far as I know, a relay switch uh, to connect to the grid once he runs out of, of, of battery power. And uh, if he's off grid, when the switch is off, he's running on the on the PV power, of course, and the power of the battery. And he uses the excessive power for hot water heating as well. Uh, thanks for mentioning the uh, the web interface. Uh, as long as the actor unit is connected to a router, you also have access to a web interface of the actor. So beside the color touch display. Uh, you have a second way to control the system, to, to change the sec uh, settings of the actor. And uh, of course, on the web interface, there are much more settings possible uh, than on the, on the display. And what Javier uh, has shown before is also a screenshot of our new uh, online platform, which is called mypv.live. And you can activate your actor units there. Uh, this is interesting for, for private customers as well as for installers, because uh, especially for installers, it gives them the chance to, uh, to check the performance of the system at their final customers. And they can do remote uh, changes of the settings from their office. It's not necessary to, to go to the customer. If it's necessary, it makes it much easier that way so and then there's our way of power control power regulation uh, as my pv does is described here 
Uh, we are uh, using a pure sine wave to adjust the power output. And this is uh, uh, really important in terms of, of quality for power regulators. So actually we are working according to the same principle as a PV inverter does. We have a PWM uh, system integrated which uh, creates a pure sine wave on the output. What we are definitely not doing, we are not doing uh, phase angle controls by thyristors, which uh, is uh, the diagram on the right here. Uh, a thyristor cuts the sine wave, uh, thus the, the quality of the grid becomes uh, worse. Uh, we are, uh, in our way, uh, we are compliant with the rules of the grid operators and this is really a, um, an important quality topic uh, that you have to know. There is also an overview of other uh, forms of power control available for download. And um, yeah, here might be actually we have done our homework and, and give you a solution with a high quality standard. This is what you have to know here. And uh, what else? Uh, we have done an online um, review and online research actually. or. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a survey uh, where we check the data sheets and the websites of other of other manufacturers. And what we figure figured out that we have uh, really a huge number of unique sales points. So the systems uh, with where we uh, that we have compared. Uh, I'm sorry. Are there some issues with the with the sound? Can you still hear? Yes. Okay. I continue my presentation. I hope the problem uh, has passed away. Okay. Um, we, uh, we did a comparison with other manufacturers and we compared ourselves with our power controllers, which can do linear power control. This has nothing to do with a comparison with power controllers, which control the power output stepwise. Let's say 500 watt, 1000 watt, uh, 1500 watt. We are not doing it that way. It really all of them are uh, using linear power control. Um, I have hidden the name of the brands here, but I can tell you these are two Austrian competitors. This is a German and an Italian manufacturer. And one, what we figured out is that we have a huge number of advantages. We are comp uh, open for third party control. We can control each output on our power stage linearly. We have a color touch display. We have uh, all connections pluggable to uh, enable a very easy and comfortable installation. Um, there are other brands which have uh, three phase uh, loads. Uh, there are other brands which have an integrated relay. But then there's the next benefit that only that is only available by MyPV. We can be used in off grid systems with the frequency mode. Uh, we have a PWM output signal, and uh, for for example, we can do the the RPM control of a hydronic pump in that way. Uh, we can also be controlled by PWM input signal as well. So uh, a lot of, of ways to control the power output of the actor. And finally, uh, there are these lines which I want to sum up as, let's say, as the homework of the manufacturer. I already mentioned that we um, we are compliant with the rules of the grid operators, especially in, in here in Europe, in Switzerland, in Switzerland, this is very, very important. And here we have a high quality uh, standard, which also fulfills the requirements in Switzerland. Uh, then we have done our homework on electromagnetic compatibility. There are there's a manufacturer on this ta table here, which is off the scale. And when uh, when uh, a grid operator, grid operator comes to my PV. OK, now I have okay, a strong echo have on my speaker. On my Javier, speaker. can you switch Javier, off your mic, please? Uh, I uh, hope it's I not hope the case not the at, uh, for, at the listeners. Uh, for the listeners. I, I continue I, I to can... speak or I can decrease my speakers on my side. This should work. This should work. Um, um, so, um, so um, this is this is this very is, important. Is we have we can we have provided all the test reports for the for the labs in Australia, and there is the permission to use the the solutions in Australia as well. Not only here in Europe, of course, also in Australia and New Zealand. This is 
now allowed because we have provided uh, the, all the test reports, we have provided the test samples for your labs in Australia and so there is also the permission to use the system on your market as well. Um, then uh, there are the actual advantages. I will not go into every detail here. I, I already mentioned all of them several times. Um, then there is the question where to buy. The answer is easy. This is uh, the ESW websites. ESW is our exclusive distribution partner for Australia and New Zealand. And I really want to invite you to check their website. Uh, convince yourself how easy it is. Uh, to create power to heat uh, solutions for residential buildings, also for commercial project projects, by the way. Uh, and I also want to invite you to come to our website because you will find uh, most of the information in our uh, info center at the MyPV website. Not only the manuals are there, also the wiring diagrams, marketing materials, and also records of other webinars are available for download. So I really want to invite you, check our website and see uh, how easy it is to install those systems. And then also check our YouTube channel. We are uploading uh, new videos regularly. And of course, this is an, uh, an important information source as well. And then um, I, I think we have lost Javier. Uh, Gerhard, you are with us now, but your mic is off. Um, your mic is on now. Please try to speak, Gerhard. Can you hear me now, Renny? Yes, okay. I have to scale up my speaker a little bit. Excellent. So, yeah, hello works, to everybody still listening. We are a little bit over time, so we we'll keep it short. Uh, there is one point that uh, originally we wanted to announce the winner right now. As you see, we have some technical problems with uh, Javier getting, getting lost. Uh, that's one thing. This, the second thing is that we uh, couldn't get the, um, Can you see uh, the participants from, from EduTip during the session, so it needs to be closed. Maybe Kelly has some feedback for us, if you could Hi. write in the, in the chat, because I think Javier tried to send the, the participants. And Javier is back again. Hi. Can you, <laughs> Can you see me? Yes. Yeah, you were online. I had to restart the laptop. It didn't work. So, yeah, Kelly sent me the, the winner. Do you want me to announce it right now? Yes, please. Uh, can you play some music for the winner? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be nice. Actually, I'm not prepared for it. Sorry. We can, uh, so we we can play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the winner is uh, Peter McDowell. Okay, Peter, congratulations. You will receive an actor eye. <laughs> yeah, he's already uh, recognized it. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, uh, actually, we are at the end of our presentation. Gerhard, we have the question and answer session left. Are there still uh, questions left that needs to be answered? Yeah, I've tried to answer most of them. There were a couple of questions around the uh, the frequency mode and the off-grid modes. I think it was not fully clear uh, what the difference between an DC coupled and the AC coupled system is. I'm not sure if we, if we have uh, slides prepared for that. I don't think so. Uh, no, all the slides that we have prepared have been in the presentation. Okay. But uh, for off-grid application, I want to recommend uh, a record of a webinar that we have done with SMA. There is There was one specialized webinar with SMA for off-grid mode. It's also available in English. So uh, maybe this can answer many other questions. Uh, there we show together with, uh, with an employee of SMA how both systems can be combined. I hope this is useful. Excellent. And there were some questions around spa heating, pool heating. Um, actually, um, 
Yeah, this is possible. Uh, this is, by the way, also do, uh, done by the by the owner of the single family home, which has electric hot water heating and electric space heating. Uh, because what what it, does he do uh, during summertime? He disconnects the the power supply from his electric uh, space heating uh, mats and connects it to the uh, electric heater in the in the pool uh, system. So for the actor, it does not matter whether it is an immersion heater, an infrared panel, an electric heating mat, or uh, a, an electric pool heater. As long as it is a pure resistive element, a pure ohmic load, we can use it. Mm -hmm. So to be clear, it will not work with a heating fan, for example, because the fan uh, has, has an, an electric motor integrated. This will not work. But for every pure electric heater, it can be used. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's one thing. And then another question was around using heat pumps together with pool heating. I think this is a good application because a, a heat pump is fairly efficient if you use it for the low temperature uh, water of, of, the, of the pool. But you perfectly could uh, additionally combine it with the actor because the, the, the heat pump uh, itself is not controllable if, unless you switch it on and off. So it would take either power or would not take power. Uh, we could control this, it with this heat pump mode, as uh, Reinhard explained. So you could combine it with the actor. Actor takes the power linearly, so it really reduces your your export uh, uh, kilowatt hours quite a bit. And once you have enough power from the PV system, we could uh, cut in the, uh, the heat pump and then heating your pool even more efficiently. So this is a perfect application. Okay, other questions? Okay, I'm just looking at the chat. I think we get some some nice feedback. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for, for your feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have covered the question. Of course, if you, if you want, you can uh, write in your chat if something's open for you. And of course, we, are, uh, we will send the presentation to you. That's mm -hmm. one thing. I'm not sure if you mentioned it already. Yes, yes. Uh, Kelly from ESW will take care about it and it, she will provide the, the PDF slides today. Uh, and what, we have a, a, a recording of yes. the webinar, I guess. The webinar is also recorded. I will upload it uh, on our web server. This will take a few hours until it's available, uh, but we can publish the link to the record at the later time as well. So I recommend that we send the slide together with a link to the, to the uh, recording together. No, no problem. Then we have to ask for a little patience of our listeners because the video uh, needs to be some time to be prepared. <laughs> it's going to be in the evening anyway. So we are, we are having the day before <laughs> us anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Most of our listeners are, are going out of office now. Uh, we will start our day, Gerhard. We are on the other side of the globe. And I think when there are uh, no questions left, then it's up to me to thank, say thank you very much uh, to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time that you were our listeners today. I also have to say thank you to Javier and his uh, whole team of ESW, which is a really, really a, a great partner for MyPV in Australia. Thank you very much, guys and uh, also for the chance to do this webinar together. Uh, so uh, you, you. you're welcome. <laughs> and also uh, thank you very much to all uh, ladies and gentlemen, which, which gives such a nice feedback in the chat. Um, I will keep the chat open for a few minutes. Um, and uh, then I have to say thank you very much. Have a nice day or evening or where, depending wherever you are. And all the best from my PV from Austria. Thank you very much.